folks, uh, and welcome uh, to an another little mini project uh, that we have going on here in the shed. Uh, I must apologize um, because this isn't the first time that I've filmed this. Um, I filmed this in a series of stages yesterday, um, going through all the various you know parts that I was doing. I filmed it with this little uh, kind of a cheap fake Go, GoPro um, action camera thing. Now, this is very good. I uh, paid about 40 euros for this thing. And I had only actually realized yesterday that it's capable of shooting uh, 4K at 30 frames a second. And of course, I made the mistake of thinking, oh, cool, let's shoot in 4K. As I see, there's a good few videos on YouTube now uh, adopting that particular format. Well, the camera could shoot 4K, the memory card could take 4K, um, but sadly, my PC had a bit of a brain fart uh, when I tried to edit uh, the 4K footage. So, unfortunately, uh, the footage that I had on this, um, I could probably figure out a way to you know, make it, it work, but uh, I just decided that for simplicity's sake, it'd be easier to reshoot. So anyway, enough about, about, about that. Uh, let's get straight in, and I'm going to show you guys what this project is all about. Alrighty, so this guy is kind of the centerpiece um, of what we're working on. What you're looking at here is a 80 kilowatt permanent magnet motor, uh, three phase um, AC power, liquid cooled, uh, coupled up to a single speed reduction gearbox and differential. Now, the really interesting thing about this is that it can pump out 80 kilowatts and this whole shooting match here weighs 25 kilograms I can pick this up and I'm no weight lifter I could pretty much bench press this thing um, and it pumps out 80 kilowatts it is manufactured by I believe a Canadian company called TM4 and we managed to get um, this motor and uh, some of the control modules. So let's go have a look at those. Alrighty, so what we've got on the bench here is pretty much a stripped out version of the um, wiring harness that we got with the uh, system. Um, I spent a good bit of time stripping out all of the unnecessary wires going through uh, what we really needed in order to get the um, essentials here. Now, we got three modules. This big beastie here is the inverter. Um, so this is, you know, the heart of what we need to run that nice motor. And this guy here um, it's very simple, we've got battery power in on the far side, we've got motor three phases out, we've got uh, power, CAN bus, and a 12 volt enable signal here, and a resol resolver connector here. This module that I'm kind of using as a bit of a, kind of a doorstop at the minute, uh, I don't know what this thing does. Um, it could be a charger, but I think it's more likely to be a DC to DC converter, uh, judging by some of the wiring um, that was in the harness. So, uh, the next module, which is this one here, uh, which is probably the most important of them, is the ECU. So, this is basically responsible for taking in signals from the uh, car, so brake pedal, accelerator pedal, uh, switches, all that kind of thing, gear shift position, <coughs> excuse me, and translating those inputs into CAN bus messages 
uh, that we then send to the inver inver inverter to command the motor uh, to actually do work for us. Sorry, just a bellish at home today. Anyway, so bit of a mess here, but we do have some of the wiring info. Uh, like we do have a pinout for the ECU, we have a pinout for the inverter and stuff like that. So very important info uh, to get us started. So um, what we've got on the bench is we have the 12 volt power going to the ECU. We have 12 volt power going to the inverter. We have CAN bus uh, linking the ECU to the inverter. And we are listening in on that CAN bus uh, with our little Arduino Dewey here. And we also have what's called the vehicle CAN uh, connected from the ECU uh, to the second channel on our um, CAN shield here in the Arduino. So we can now listen in to the messages that are being sent from the inverter, or sorry, from the ECU to the inverter, and also see what messages that the um, ECU sends out on the vehicle can. Now, bits that we don't have include the BMS controller, which is somewhat critical, and the uh, things like the, the um, ABS computer and stuff li like that, so probably not very critical. So, what we've got is we've got a power supply here providing 12 volts uh, to the inverter and the ECU. Currently, they're in kind of a rest state, which would be a powered off state, so vehicle turned off, key off, locked up. And you might be able to see there on the um, power supply, we're drawing three, three milliamps. Now, if I then go ahead, and I've identified here what wire is the ignition on signal um, to the uh, ECU. We'll, we'll go ahead and uh, connect 12 volts to that and we'll be able to see uh, what actually ha happens when we wake the system up. Okay, so what we're looking at now is a savvy can uh, monitoring the CAN bus um, on both the, what they call the uh, vehicle CAN bus and the motor controller CAN bus. So let's, let's go ahead and turn the ignition on. So you see straight away, uh, we get a lot of can frames pumping in. Uh, I don't know how this is going to come out on the video, but I'm seeing just under 4,000 frames a second um, across a range of different IDs. And uh, you may have heard a click there uh, that occurs in the inverter. So that looks to stabilize between the two buses at around the 4,000 frames per second. And it certainly ratchets up fast. So we'll turn the ignition off and that'll kind of go into a shutdown mode and um, we should drop to zero frames. There we go. So that's that part. Now what you're looking at this time is the output uh, when we apply the DBC files to the CAN messages. Now the, the DBC files we're very lucky to have because that's going to allow us to work out what can messages that we need to control the inverter and also what um, you know what uh, format that we need to send them in so for example here we see that ID uh, 40 um, on the bus one, which is the motor controller bus, has three data bytes in it, and each of these bytes gives us um, what they control. So, for example, the drive selector switch is in neutral, we're commanding zero torque from the motor, and we're basically uh, telling the motor that it's in, in neutral. So 
that's uh, one huge advantage that we have with this particular system because without these uh, DBC files, it wouldn't be impossible, but it would be very, very difficult to um, basically figure out what the CAN messages that we would need to control the inverter. So I suppose the question now is, what are we going to do? Um, we could, and it had been my original plan, to try to reuse this ECU uh, yet, you know, with a lot of the um, unnecessary interlocks and stuff bypassed on it and just get it to run the motor for us. Now that might be still possible, but looking through the documentation, uh, and I do have some of the, the documentation for this particular system, fortunately, it looks like the ECU is expecting a CAN message on the vehicle bus from the BMS, in it, uh, basically telling it that the battery is, is in a position to supply power. Now, without the BMS module or without a knowledge of what that CAN message is, uh, I suspect that we won't actually be able to um, get the ECU to send a go command to the inverter. But fortunately, as you saw there, we do have some of the DBCs so that we can interpret the messages that are being sent and hopefully then create some of our own messages uh, with the necessary CRC byte um, and get the inverter to respond. So that's, um, that's our little kind of a uh, CAN bus hacking project uh, that we're working on at the minute amongst lots of other different crazy projects. Um, so I hope you guys like this. I know it's uh, probably, y y you know, a little bit specialized, um, but it's just, I suppose, showing the wide variety of things that I'm doing here with the EV components and builds and all that. So. What I will say to you guys is, um, thanks a lot for, for watching, thanks for supporting me, uh, thanks for hanging in there, and um, we will see you in the next video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. And I've had a lot of requests recently uh, for people looking for a way to support this channel. Now, I ran a, pay, a, pay, a, blah, 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 blah. I ran a Patreon campaign last year it didn't really work out for me so what I've done is I just set up a little email address it's donations at evbmw.com there'll be a link in the description to that so if you want to make a contribution to the channel please do please uh, have a look at that link and you can send me a PayPal payment that way and it'll go straight straight into the bills or crazy our pro, 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 projects and uh, <laughs> can tell how tired I am um, and we will see you all next time guys and happy can bossing <laughs>